Hello everybody and welcome back to my Union Pacific N-Scale Willow Creek subdivision layout um, series video I've got. Um, the very last section of scenery to sort of do on the video is Powder River. That's the last the last of the bulk areas that need to be scenicked uh, down there. So I'm going ahead, I'm making the hillside that's sort of scalloped out with the where you can see where the excavators and that have, have, have eaten away to, to sort of um, get the gravel to, to load my live gravel trains down there. So what I've done, I've gone to go ahead, I'm sort of going to use my foam, using that uh, XPS foam there and just sort of layer it up like a wedding cake that um, you'll get to see as the video goes on. So thank you very much for clicking on this video and I hope you enjoy watching it. Please make sure you like, subscribe and drop drop a comment on if you if you feel you would need to know anything or you want to ask me anything but um, yeah stay tuned thank you okay so here we are we've got the landforms I was telling you about how I've layered them up with the XPS foam here I've basically cut out the rough shape of what I've wanted and I've used a uh, kitchen cheese grater to sort of grind them down to get the sort of contours I want now I've got one two three four layers here I've also carved in to get a little bit of difference so it's not just a flat uh, top. And in the front here you can see where I've sort of scalloped, I've made them stepped out so it sort of looks like a quarry. This is going to be where the, the excavators have been in and, um, and digging away. So all of this is going to get covered in plaster cloth. I'm going to leave the verticals, this section here, and I'm actually going to do that in plaster and carve out the rock faces out of the plaster for later. But what I'm just going to do is just cover all this up and let it dry. The good thing about this is this hill actually, um, when it's done, then I can actually put it in as one. So I can work on it off the layout just because of the difference of the, the bottom deck and the, and the top deck. It'll be too, um, too narrow to get in there. So it's easier to do it this way. So basically what I'm doing, I'm just using the plaster cloth, which is your normal plaster cloth, and just give it a, a quick dip in the water, like that, and then I just layer it straight on top of the foam. And I've done this with every, every bit of scenery on my layer. I've done this uh, foam and plaster cloth uh, sort of method. You can see there's a whole lot of holes there when I put it on. What you do is once the plaster's activated, you give it a little rub around and sort of massage that plaster around and then you just keep going on uh, with that sort of doing little overlaps and the plaster cloth will just straight away conform to the uh, whatever shape you're doing. Um, sort of try not to get them over well folded over overlapped too much and you can sort of work out the creases and being this uh, plaster cloth doesn't take too long for it to start uh, going off going a little bit solid but sort of gonna put it in there and, and tease it out to get rid of any any wrinkles and, um, sort of come to the edge you can sort of fold the plaster back a little bit to sort of and just, just push it down and as I um, as I move along I'll continue doing this along I've got at least uh, this is probably the la the largest biggest section of scenery that I'm doing the layout so I thought I might as well make a video out of it and show you how I do my scenery um, as I said in other videos I'm not telling you how to do your scenery or anything like that but this is just how I do it I've got a road coming around it's going to eventually a little uh, gravel road and it's going to go up over the bridge where the line comes through for the uh, off the helix the line will come around here and this is going to be a road that goes up over the, the bridge it's just a little gravel road so i'll just work my way around and i'll continue to cover this section up until i get everything all covered and hopefully it should look a little bit better than just um shaped uh shaped foam okay so we got the plaster cloth on sort of got it all roughly smoothed out sort of where we want to get out our, our contours of the land that we want and the next step once once this here all sets up dries up 
I'm going to come back. I'm going to do the actual quarry scene with the. I've got some plaster that I'll plaster the verticals of each side, and I'll wait for that plaster to dry, and I'll I'll uh, sort of chisel in uh, the rock face, sort of um, carve in the rock face on each each sort of level there. And uh, once that's all plastered, everything's all plastered and everything's carved, then I'll look at, I'll be actually painting the the, the rock face before I do anything else on, on adding the uh, the proper scenery. So I went ahead, uh, batched up some plaster, did the verticals here, and uh, sort of chiseled it out, carved out the rock face uh, on how I sort of wanted it there. And it come up pretty good, so the next stage into here is on to painting. Okay, so what I did, I've, um, I took it outside and I actually went and painted it. I used a, like a grey primer, but um, it sort of reacted with the, the foam a little bit. You can probably see a little bit up here where it sort of ate away and a little bit there, but that's fine. I can cover these up with uh, grey ballast and bits of rocks and stuff a little bit down here. But the rest, where, where the paint touched the rest of the foam, like over here, it hasn't eaten away at it at all. So I'm not too sure why it's just that section there, but... You know, that's the first coat of grey on, and it's um, it's come up really well. You can sort of see all the little drill marks and chisel marks where everything's uh, where they've been uh, excavating away at it. So after that um, coat is dry, I'm going to come along with a, like a dark wash, a black wash, to sort of highlight the the uh, the chisel marks or the, the the cut marks. And then once that's done, I'll come along with a white paint and do a dry brush to sort of highlight the uh, the bits of rock sticking out. But um, that's where we're up to at the moment, and it's still looking pretty good. This the the level bits around here, they will be uh, coated with the same grey ballast that I use in my live gravel loads. Um, so it's basically trying to trying to keep it all roughly the same colour. But so far, so good, and we'll continue on. Okay, so we've moved on. We've already given the rock face there a bit of a wash. I'm using Tamiya Paint X1 Black. It's very watered down and uh, very light. So I'll just you can see I've done all those steps using a little um, sponge here. Look, and just picking a little bit up, starting at the top, and just dab it on and let that, let that wash, that really watered down wash flow into all the little nooks and crannies on the rock face there. And the good thing with the sponge is if it's too dark you can sort of mop it up with that sponge. But um, just make sure you sort of get all, all into the little nooks and crannies. You can see I'm using the little corner part of that, that sponge. And uh, when, when you're happy with it, of course, when this dries, it'll, it'll lighten up as it dries. So don't be too alarmed if it's too dark. But um, that's basically the technique I use. And that just, uh, the next stage will be a, a white paint uh, dry brush over the whole rock face to highlight the bits sticking out. And um, that is basically pretty much all there is to it. And moving along here, we're going to go just with our... Um, our white paint and we're going to sort of do like a dry brush and it's, it, it just sort of bring out the highlights at the tops of those rocks there it leaves the, the black and the nooks and crannies and sort of lightens up the the uh the bits of the rock sticking out probably can't really see much with the light here of what i'm doing but you'll be able to see it uh, shortly it's going to work around the um work my way around the rock face until I'm sort of happy with it. I can make it uh, lighter or darker depending on, on how it looks but it seems to bring out the details all right. The, um, the paint I'm using is just normal acrylic um, poster paint pretty much. But, um, do a little bit, step back, have a look at it, see how it looks. There we go after, you can just see up in the top left of the corner there, I've still got that little repair to do, but that's basically what I'm after. Uh, that's uh, I've gone over the whole thing there, and I'm happy with the way that is. Happy with the way that looks, so then it's on to the next stage after this, which is actually painting all of that white plaster. Um, painted brown. Uh, I've got to paint everything white, so uh, even though there's going on top, I can't have any white showing through, so 
the, uh, the next clip you might get a bit of a shock what it looks like. The paint is actually a brown but it looks quite red. But yeah. And there it is. It does look pretty bright but uh, trust me it's just the camera. So once this is all painted then the grout powder goes on top of this and then my static grass goes on top of that and any other sort of scenics that go on that. But um, I'm happy how it's turned out. I'll just use this um, it's a cheap uh, poster paint that I use. It's actually like a, a brown. It looks more red on the camera, but um, yeah, I try to hide all the white bits. Uh, the white bits around the base will be covered when I put the put it onto the layout. But um, next stage is that is the ground cover. And we're back now. The paint's all dry. Everything's all dry. That dried overnight there, and I'm going to start putting in my um, my ground cover here. So. I use uh, just a neat PVA glue, this is 100% PVA glue, I don't water it down or anything. And basically just blob it on as you see I'm doing here. Yeah, once it's all blobbed on I'll, um, I'll brush it around and I'll sort of uh, try and cover everything that's uh, been painted brown. And um, I'll just use a little brush and slosh it around. Is I think there's the, the paint layer, the glue layer, the ground cover, so there's about four or five different layers I put on before I um, onto a scene there for, for the ground cover. And I'll just sort of try and get up um, sort of close to what I can next to those rocks there, I sort of overlap the grey paint so that the glue will overlap the grey paint so I'll get the ground cover right up to the edge there and the static grass when it goes on is going to go right to the edge. And I'm actually going to have uh, grass tufts down on the steps um, to show that it hasn't been worked for a while. But I'm just going along just making sure I sort of get an even coverage of glue. Not too thick but not too thin. And um, keeping, the, keeping a nice uh, consistency of glue through there. I won't show you me actually painting the whole thing in glue because I'm pretty sure you sort of get the picture of what I'm doing here but um, once the uh, once the glue's all on and I'll, I'll get on to uh, actually doing the, the grout cover. And voila, the whole thing's painted. Everything's covered in white, uh, white glue there and I use a, a grout powder a travertine colour grout powder that was picked up from the local hardware shop and this stuff is very fine so try not to sneeze while you're using it it is very fine and I use uh, to put it on just using a little teaspoon one teaspoon at a time and I put it through a, a kitchen sieve this is a sieve I've bought specifically for my scenery and it seems to work all right so um, get uh, one one teaspoon at a time I don't want to load the thing up because this stuff goes everywhere you gotta be sort of careful where you're putting it just a gentle uh, shake over that white glue and I'll just keep going and until I've got the uh, the whole the whole area sort of covered Okay, now that's all done. Everything's been covered in that grout powder. I'm gonna come along now and I'm using some IPA and I'm gonna do a fine mist over all of that uh, powder I put down. Uh, mist it from a bit of a, a distance. You get hold too close, you actually end up blowing some of that powder off. But uh, just light mist, you don't wanna absolutely soak this. This will basically soak into the grout powder and into the glue and sort of break up that surface tension of that white glue. Just give it a nice little uh, little um a soak up there and uh from that section onwards we're actually going to start adding in the ballast we're going to do the uh, woodland scenics the gray ballast here it's a fine gray gray blend that i use 
and um, it's going to go onto these steps around here on the the flat surfaces around where it's been um, excavated out. So again, I'll just use a a little tiny teaspoon, and um, I mean this is pretty. It's not much. You know, it's not like rocket science. It's basically like your ballasting track, but. Uh, that it's, um, it's the same sort of system you use. I'll put the ballast on and I'll wet that down with the IPA and I'll put the glue on that as well. But um, I'm starting on the top step there, so anything that falls down below is uh, stuck on the bottom step. As I go along there, I'll be to even it out, a little makeup brush and just dabbing it. You don't, to, you don't want to brush anything away, you just want to sort of dab it to, to flatten that ballast out so it's flip bit of a flat surface yes. it'll just continue on doing that until uh, all the balusters uh, all the gravel sorry is all on those steps of the of the cup Then I'll finish off, I've just got that, uh, the last little bottom step there to do with the ballast and um, we'll get on and we'll wet it down with some uh, IPA and add the glue. It's the sort of same uh, system I'm using with the IPA, just give it a nice, um, you'll need to wet this down a little bit more than what you did the grout powder for the IPA to actually sink into the, that ballast there. And give it a good little soak up. And exactly the same, here we are, I've got the famous wine glass again. Here's my wine glass mixers that I use for all my scenery. Um, and it's going to be just a 50-50 mix of uh, white glue and water. And I use the little pipette and I just add the glue on. Exactly what you do when you're ballasting track. And the exact same principles and there's nothing new here, there's no techniques here, there's nothing. It's just basically going through and dropping the glue in. Yeah, it's not too exciting what I'm doing, but I'm just going to carry on and finish off these last few steps here and, um, and then we'll wait for that to dry up and on to the next step. Alrighty, here we are, finally. If you haven't nodded off to sleep yet in the video, um, congratulations. I know my voice is, I've got a very droney voice. I even listen to myself when I replay these videos, when I edit them. Yes, my voice is droney. I'm not exactly a public speaker, but um, I am who I am. Uh, thank you so much if you're still with us at the moment. It is a little bit of a long video. It, uh, we're finally onto the static grass stage. You can see I've got my static grass applicator there and I'm using a mixture of woodland scenic burnt grass and wild honey. And I've only got around about 30% of wild burnt grass in there and about 70% of wild honey in the applicator there. I sort of mix them up into blends to get a little bit of variety in the colors. but. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cover all of that uh, grout powder that I did previously with 100% uh, neat uh, white glue, PVA glue. And once that's all covered, I'll go with my static grass applicator and cover the whole thing in static grass there and uh, we'll see how it turns up and hopefully this video won't go any longer than it uh, sort of really needed to. I sort of wanted to cover every, every step along the way for, you know, probably a good a large percentage of the viewers watching this already know what I'm doing uh, but this is sort of directed at the people that are sort of new to the hobby you know that some miracle may arise where they actually might pick up a new um, a, a new technique so thank you we'll get on with the with the static grass and boom voila here we go now what I've done is this has covered everything else in uh, PVA glue pretty much like I did in that step before I put on the grout powder and what else I did is I just put in a little brass wire into the glue there, which is my ground wire, the wire that will go in for the uh, static grass, grass applicator, sorry. 
and what I'll do, I'll just turn the, uh, the applicator on and it's going to start going ahead and, sorry, you're out of focus, and start going ahead and just start uh, putting the uh, putting that static grass on. Now it doesn't look um, not much at the moment, but uh, once once I go over this whole area here, you'll see uh, you'll see what I'm what I mean there. And just sort of just work your way over in, in sort of areas there. Make sure you get sort of an even coverage. And um, I'll continue with this and I'll go through the whole, I'll go over the whole uh, glued up area there and uh, we will, um, and we will see how that, uh, how that turns out. And voila, here we are, we've got the static grass, everything's on, these, uh, what I've done is I've just used a little bit of foam bushes on the, on the steps there and done a couple of little bits of uh, bushes sort of over, over the area to sort of uh, break up the scene there but that is it all done thank you so much for uh, for sticking around I know it was a long video um, yeah thank you very much if you've made it this far please uh, don't forget to throw anything in the comments and um, we much appreciate I'll see if I can actually uh, reply back to you but that is my quarry scene this is the Powder River quarry scene everything all done from start to finish really hope you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe to my channel for more and upcoming videos i have got a couple of uh i have been requested for more trains running so i'm looking at doing some videos for that but um thank you very very much it's uh it's been uh, quite interesting making this video and uh you get to see the the final finished product anyway cheers thank you very much see you all